Hello. Good day to everybody. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where in the world you are. Uh, welcome to my kitchen once again um, on this lovely sleepy Sunday. So um, I uh, just showed you guys a picture of what we're making today. So this is our fishless fingers. Uh, you can make them into fish goujons if you want to, um, any type of uh, fish type thing. Um, and let me just say hello to everybody who has joined already. So Colleen, good morning, good morning. And Karen, Lara, Doug and Justine. And Jeff, who's in the other room. Um, so <laughs> thank you for joining me once again. Um, we will be keeping on doing these lives every single day at midday until 2nd of July. So once we get to the 2nd of July, we will reduce them uh, to Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays, um, still at midday. Oh, Julie, thank you for joining us. Uh, lovely to see you here. Um, so yeah, we will be um, hosting our lives three days a week and we will be making them all cook-alongs. So as you know, uh, one of my hopes for what we're doing here is that we can actually get a lot more people cooking along um, and so we can manage that a bit better if we're just doing three days a week um, and of course we've got our pro chef course starting soon our online course so which Justine has signed up for um, Denise says good morning good morning and greetings thank you for joining us again today um, so yeah we'll be doing we'll be having a reduced service from the 2nd of July uh, but still at midday, still at midday, UK time. Paul, good morning, good day, good afternoon. Uh, and Jim, thank you for joining us again. Okay, so, um, and, oh, yes. So, I'm sorry that we can't do that on Sundays. I know that that was, like, the most popular day. But I need to go and see my family at some point. So, <laughs> and that's generally going to be over a weekend on a Sunday. So, and... Um, hopefully we'll be joining uh, Gloria as well. So Gloria is one of the people that watches the show and she is also Jeff's mum. So I'm hoping to go and uh, see her uh, soon um, once you know where we return to as much normality as we can manage at the moment. But we'll definitely be going down there to meet them. So I'm afraid that Sunday's was out. So what I would like to do instead is put all of the um, the lives that we've done during the week onto our Facebook page. We'll reschedule them for the Sunday so that if you guys haven't had time, if you haven't been able to um, cook along with us on the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then you can make up for it on the Sunday and you can do all three on the Sunday. So our Sunday is more for you guys to cook and share with us what you made. Um, so hopefully that will be like quite a busy day um, in the community hub, which is our Facebook group, because it would be really lovely to get you guys cooking. And a Sunday for a lot of people is uh, usually quite a good day for that. Okay, so that, that's gonna be your homework basically. So we're gonna do our work Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then you do your homework on the Sunday. Okay, if you can't, if you can't make the cook along. Uh, Laura Louise, thank you for coming back and joining us again. Good morning, good morning. I love the exclamation mark because it makes it suggest that you're really happy and motivated. <laughs> and it's a Sunday, and uh, I know that some of you may not be so motivated. So let's see, let's see. Lisa, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so are we on? 82, 83, I've lost count. I've, I'm terrible at keeping count. Okay, right, so anyone who is cooking along, then please do let me know. Uh, Gloria's just joined, Gloria's just joined. Your ears must have been burning because I was just talking uh, to the rest of the group about why we're not gonna do Sundays and part of the reason is because we wanna go and see our families. We really, really miss uh, all of our families and yeah, can't wait for that. Really, really can't wait for that. So, um, okay, let's come over here and I'll show you guys what our ingredients are today. Really, really simple recipe. So we have our nori sheets here. I said nori sheets, but actually you can use quite a few different types of seaweed. Um, and, uh, you know, we say nori sheets because they are the most accessible. Um, they are the one that is, e is easiest to find, basically. So, there are nori sheets, but you can already get these toasted and flaked. 
Um, and you can even get, you know, those little snack packs of nori. So, um, you know, you can use those instead if you just have like those little snack packs. You know, they're like about that size, like little squares in a packet. So you could use them as well. Um, so Doug says he's cooking, but not the same recipe. Hope I don't end up with a hybrid dish. You may do, you may do, but that's like part of the fun. Uh, and me and Jeff are actually going over to Doug's for some food later. So I'm very, very excited because nobody ever cooks for me. Well, hardly ever, hardly ever. Um, okay, so yes, we have our, our nori sheets there, but what you could use, um, and um, uh, Gloria might recognize these because they're a gift from her. <laughs> so these are seaweed flakes and savory umami flakes. Um, so both of them have seaweed in, um, and they this, this one also has salt in it. So you could use something like this. If you use something like this, um, that has both seaweed in it and salt in it, then just bear that in mind because of course you've already added salt to it. Um, but there are these, you know, these seaweed flakes don't um, have any salt in them. So you could use that as a substitute. And I would say, use it to taste, okay? Use it to taste because uh, it's very difficult for me to tell how strong these things would be if you have them, you know, if it was different brand or whatever. But this is the type of recipe that you can make it and taste it and then change it if you need to. So. There are these things on the market these days which are great to use um, and it does mean that you don't have to do this first step of toasting and grinding um, the nori flakes okay so a few people have mentioned about what's underneath the rainbow and sarah has joined us good morning good morning colleen says that's not a happy little fish under the rainbow is it it looks like a shark <laughs> justine says it's a shark underneath the rainbow and Jesse says sharks aren't that scary. Yes, okay, so I have to show you this picture because I did intend for it to be a happy fish that's free, hence those three fingers, uh, it ended up as a shark wearing a baseball cap. So uh, he's got really good teeth. So there you go, that, that's what is underneath our rainbow uh, for today, but our shark who is representing all fish and all free fish that are free because we have decided not to eat them. We've got our other recipe instead. Okay, so Paul says episode 83 today, um, and not a day missed. Okay, yes, it says absolutely, absolutely. Um, and actually there was something I was gonna ask you guys, because um, I thought that it might be nice to do a QA and a tomorrow with me, because we don't often get to chat about, um, you know, veganism in general, or just get to have like your vegan foodie questions like fired at me. Um, and it might be nice to allow you guys to like fire those questions at me. Um, because I think that, you know, we don't often get a chance to do that when I'm actually making a recipe, mainly because I'm kind of focusing on doing the recipe. So it's kind of difficult to, to talk properly. Uh, but yes, what do you guys think about that Q and A tomorrow with me? rather than us actually cooking, making a recipe. What we could do as well, is we could have it as like, let's have lunch together. <laughs> so you guys all get your lunch at midday. Uh, for those of you who are in the States, breakfast or brunch, you know, it's gonna be breakfast, isn't it? Yeah, it's super early, breakfast. And then we can have like lunch slash breakfast together. I might be eating, just a warning. Um, and then we can just like have a chat and a conversation. So. Uh, but it would be on Facebook Live, by the way. It would be on Facebook Live. Um, I could potentially get a few of you on Zoom and then on the Facebook Live. So if any of you are actually up for that, let me know. Let me know. Put your hands up. Okay, right. Let's let's get the show on the road. Right, okay, so uh, yes, we have our nori here. We have our one can of um, chickpeas. Um, we have our green jackfruit, our immature jackfruit. We do not want yellow jackfruit. Um, it has to be the immature jackfruit. Um, and then we have some salt here. It does need a good whack of salt. We've got our leek, we've got our oil, um, and we've got our gluten-free breadcrumbs. So of course, if you're not gluten-free, you don't need to use gluten-free breadcrumbs. These are the all gran breadcrumbs um 
and uh, you could you could use millet flakes. You could use millet flakes. Um, so that is an option. Or quinoa flakes would also work. Would also work. Um, okay, so guys, it sounds like you're up for a Q and A. Um, so what I might do actually is just pop in a post in the group later on, asking for your questions in advance. Um, just so I think that that might um, really help me manage the the whole thing. Okay, so. Let's toast our nori sheets first. I'll just move all of these over. There we go. Fishy has to go. Whoops. Sorry about that sound there, guys. And we'll get our pan on. So I do want this to be on quite a high heat. Um, so we're going to toast our nori. And a word of warning, when we toast our nori, is that it can burn really really quickly really quickly if you're not watching it so you do need to watch this um we want to um really like toast um our nuri rather than burning it um so that is one thing to watch out for so i'm just having to see, having a look to see if we've got any questions sorry so that you can't do it tomorrow ah oh, okay well hope it might you know if it works it's something that we could do again we don't know again. Uh, we could use again. Nora, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Laura Louise says, I don't have jackfruit. Can I use banana blossom? Yes, you can. Yes, you can, definitely. Uh, Mixer, good afternoon, Paul. Uh, Karen says, I'm back to work tomorrow. Ah! Well, hopefully you can have your lunch break. Um, okay. And Denise says, I have jackfruit in brine. Is this a problem? No, either, either jackfruit in brine or in water is absolutely fine. As long as it's the green jackfruit when it is in its immature state um and not jackfruit when it is in its mature state when it's yellow and then it's more like an actual fruit okay um just seems that i don't have jackfruit i'll try banana blossom yeah i mean it's going to be very similar it is going to be very similar karen said hello thank you for joining us in virginia welcome 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 um okay right now I've got this to a really, really good temperature. Uh, you know, it, it feels like a hot summer's day on my hand. That's what we're looking for before we put it in. Okay, and now I'm going to bring you guys over here to the overhead shot so that you will be able to see. Okay, so I've got a nice flat spatula here, and that's going to help just press it down because we want to get an even bake on it and even toast as much as we can because I don't know if you can see yeah you can kind of like see it's starting to go a bit kind of wobbly and if it is too too wobbly then there will be parts that are touching the pan and parts that aren't complete you know they aren't at all and in that case it would just be really really unevenly cooked and if this doesn't if this doesn't toast then it's going to be very difficult to either grind or blitz. Really difficult. So the more that we can toast it, the more, you know, in an even way, the more we are gonna be able to make it into a powder, which is what we want. So guys, if you don't have, you know, I'll be using one of these as a chopper attachment to a hand blender. Um, uh, but if you guys don't have one, then you can use a pestle and mortar for this, or you can actually just crumble it with your hands. Um, but you do need to get a good toast on it in order to do that. And for those of you who don't have food processor or this chopper attachment, I'll take you through the different methods, uh, cause I'll be using it quite a lot today, but it's quite easy to do this recipe, um, without, without one of those. Katie, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Katie will be moving soon to lovely Chester. Um, so I hope that I hope that her move goes really, really well. You know what it's like when you're moving. Just oh, endless boxes, endless boxes. I get to a point whenever I'm moving where I just like I want to just get rid of all my possessions and just <laughs> just go back to like me in a backpack and that's it. That's it, it starts off really well. And then after a while it's like, why do I have so many books? Why? One person does not need this many books. <laughs> okay, right, so as you can see, like I'm moving it around. 
and uh, I'll just hold this up to you guys. Can you see how it's changing colour? So it's going a lighter green and then into a brown. But it's a bit patchy. So I'm doing my best to just hold it down. There we go. Karen says, can't you put it in the oven to dry out a bit? Um, to be honest, I'm not sure if the seaweed would be evenly baked in. I mean, you can give it a go. This is the way that I've always done it and it's always worked for me, so I haven't tried putting it in the oven. Um, and yeah, the only thing I would be worried about was that it wouldn't be evenly, evenly baked. But as I say, give it a go and see. It does need quite a fierce heat as well. So you might find that it takes a while, actually. And you do want to make sure that it doesn't overcook and stick to the pan. Because it can overcook and stick to the pan and then it can be really difficult to take off. So usually at the beginning you'll pop it into the pan and nothing will be happening. Nothing will be happening and you'll think like, oh just this isn't going to work and then all of a sudden it will start to cook, and if you're not careful, it will start to burn. It's one of these things, you know, a bit like um, when you're making caramel. Like at the start, it doesn't really do very much. And then there's one point where it just like speeds along. So you have, you know, it's one of these things that you really, you can't take your eye off it. So you can't do this whilst also, you know, doing something else. Okay, there we go. So this is really well and evenly toasted. So I can see that the colour's changed, and in fact, let me just turn this down a bit, because I want to do this, so this will give you a better idea. So if you can see how different they look now, this is what we're going for. And this is quite stiff. So this is quite stiff, and this is still fluffy. This is what we want. Okay. Um, and now when I put the second one in, you'll see it will crisp up a lot, a lot easier. See that had an instant reaction in the pan. So I know that I'm going to have to work a bit quicker with this one. So it's the same with pancakes, actually. I don't know if you guys have found that as well. Like the first one is always like, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out. That's because the pan isn't too hot. But then as the pan like retains heat, the second, third, fourth, fifth one would be much better. Much better. So uh, Cece, which is a very lovely name, says hello from Miami Beach, Florida. We're not jealous at all. <laughs> okay, we're slightly jealous. Um, any jackfruit replacement? So uh, yes, banana blossom. Banana blossom would be a really good substitute. Really good substitute. So basically something that looks like fish flakes is what we're looking for. Uh, George said, if you are lucky enough to have a gas oven, you can just pass the lorry over the low flame a few times. So that is a really, really good idea, George. I would say, be really careful with that. Really careful with that. Um, you know, you don't want to get uh, too close or be too slow um, because you might end up um, catching it on fire. Okay, so Patricia says, would love it tomorrow. This is the Q&A we've been talking about, but fortunately I work Thursdays and Fridays. Oh, unfortunately, I work Thursdays and Fridays for the live cooking. Okay, so you're able to tune on on Thursdays and Fridays. Okay, but let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes, and then we may well do another. Okay, so Colleen says you can never have too many books. Yeah, but the thing is, like, I get book guilt, you know, when it's, like, a book that I haven't paid attention to. <laughs> when you have so many... But it's just, you know, inevitably going inevitably gonna to ha ha happen. Okay. There we go. Colleen says the first sacrificial pancake. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. See, that's what I call it. So I don't know whether, like, we're just being psychic with each other or whether you actually have a brilliant memory, Colleen, and you remember that from one of my uh, pancake uh, live recipes. 
So I'm just going to pop the heat up. It just went down a bit too low. So as you can see, like I am really taking my time with this and being really careful with it. And I'm, I, you know, you do need to be quite patient with it. It's better to be patient with it than try and hurry it along. Have it on a heat that is too high, and then, you know, it burns and sticks to the pan. I mean, that almost, almost stuck to the pan there. And see, we can also do this. We can lift it out of the pan and just pop on the corners, because quite often it's the corners that don't, cook that well. So you can lift it and just move it around. But of course, you know, if you guys can get hold of nori flakes, I think Claire Springs do nori flakes that are already toasted, then you don't actually have to do all of this. But it is a nice way to use up uh, these nori sheets, because you know, sometimes like with most sushi, and then, you know, they just kind of like sit in the cupboard. Oh, Tatiana says, hello, what is hard for me is you always use ingredients not seasonal at all. Uh, leak, the season is over. Anyway, I can see you live in cities, I guess. Well, actually, we're still getting leaks. We're still getting leaks. So, um, Jeff, my boyfriend, he has an allotment and we're still, we're still just about getting leaks from them. Um, so, but actually that's a really good point. So with the courses, the, um, pro chef courses that we run, we do give seasonal options to people for the recipes, um, for the recipes, um, that we share in there. So we try to help people with seasonality in that way. And also a lot of, um, I was going to say, sorry. It's a Sunday, I'm kind of losing my train of thought here. Um, yeah, I use a lot of uh, the veggies from our veg box, so therefore they are they are seasonal, because that's also mainly from the UK as well with Riverford. Um, so it's kind of like difficult for us to do like completely seasonal uh, with all of the ingredients that are gonna be in, uh, in our recipes. And you know, we're still kind of like having to deal with the fact that there are some ingredients that aren't coming with our deliveries and stuff like that. But more and more and more, I'm actually like making recipes for you guys based on what is in my veg box. So therefore, you know, that's gonna be seasonal. Um, so we are, we are trying, we are trying. Okay, so now we can um, chop up our leek and we just wanna finely um, slice it. So we wanna chop it into more manageable chunks. We don't want to be tackling like the whole leek in one go. Um, and I also like to get the outer leaf off. So I slice it, but I don't go all of the way through. Now I'll, I'll hold this up so that you guys can see. There we go. So I slice through near enough all of them, apart from that maybe last one. And then I can just take that one off. And that's because when, uh, when we cook it, that outer leaf can get really papery and it's not very pleasant to eat. So. And same with this one. I'm just going to take off that outer leaf and finally slice it again. So you guys can use onions or spring onions for this as well. Uh, so maybe actually um, that would be um, a great um, seasonal substitution um, is our spring onions. Because um, we have been getting some spring onions in our box recently. There we go. And I've just popped this onto the heat. There we go. And then our oil can heat up while we're while we're chopping these. 
Um, and Tatiana says, I live in the countryside and I'm almost zero waste. That's amazing. It feels good above all. So I go seasonal. Yeah, I think that that's like a really, really great thing to do. Um, I mean, I kind of struggle with going fully seasonal with having the school and having to do recipes and, and recipe videos and stuff like that. Um, but uh, one project that I want to work on uh, in maybe a month or so's time is um, setting myself a budget and seeing if we can stick to that budget while also being um, at least like 90% organic. Um, and also getting all of our fruits and veggies from Riverford organics. Um, the only thing is, um, and by the way, guys, if any of you are clicking along, then please do pop your um, your leek into your pan and start frying it. Um, it can catch quite easily. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit more oil to mine. You can also add drops of water as well, but leek. Um, it can cook very, very quickly. So just be aware of that. We don't want it to burn. Okay. There we go. I'm just going to leave that on there for a few minutes. What's that up to you? What's that up to you? Okay. So, yeah, this is an idea that I've been thinking of because, as I said, like, you know, in the school, like, we do try to get people to think about seasonality. Uh, we've worked with Riverford Organics in the past and also Hog and done recipe developing uh, development with them, uh, with our students. Um, but one of the things is like, you know, like we went organic um, maybe about a year ago, about a year ago, which for like a young business is kind of hard. Like our ingredients costs went up by, uh, by 50% when we did that. But I knew it was like the right thing to do. Um, and so, um, wherever we can get organic, we do get organic. And also, you know, we don't use like single waste plastic and stuff like that. But one of the ideas that I had recently was, as I was saying, you know, setting myself this, this budget of, and I think maybe like 200 pounds a month for two people, would that be a good budget to have? Um, and seeing if we can get 90% of, uh, our food as organic. Sometimes it can be difficult to do 100%. And also, our veg and fruit would only be from Riverford. Um, because I love supporting those guys. I really love supporting those guys. So, yeah, we're going to see if we can do that. Because one of the problems that I find with when you're talking to people about organic food and seasonal food is that they really feel like it's going to be far too expensive. And that's something for people who can afford it, really. But that's, like, one of the main complaints that people have about vegan food. They think it's going to be loads more expensive than it actually is. So I'm going to see if I can do that. And then, potentially, I will be able to have, like, a meal plan. It would only really work for people who are in the UK, though, because, of course, of the uh, accessibility of, you know, the same, like, fruits and veggies that I'm getting. Um, but I think, that you know, that would be, like, a really, really interesting thing to do. Uh... Tatiana says the only way to go to eat seasonal, it does make sense as well. Yeah, absolutely. If you use jackfruit and so on, you will have waste for sure. Um, and with the lockdown, I learned to do everything homemade. That's amazing. That's really, really amazing. Um, so I just need to buy seeds, nuts, rice, lentils, uh, bulk in bulk, and things are very easy. I use all the glass jars I had. And I do have lacto fermented. Ah, oh, you are a lady after my own heart. Definitely. That's amazing. That's amazing. Because that's, yeah, I mean, that is one of the things is that, you know, we're trying to get um, our students to think about using like more UK produce. And we've changed over a lot of our recipes. So instead of using um, things that we have to buy from abroad, so say, for example, almonds that are very, very thirsty crop, we're actually using more things like like hazelnuts and walnuts. And even though the hazelnuts and walnuts that we buy, unfortunately, are not grown in the UK, in the future, we hope that they will be. Like, they can be grown here. So we're trying to, like, shift over things in that way. But we still have this thing that people want to know how, like, what to do with this. They do want to know, they do want recipes with jackfruit and banana blossom and, you know, things that aren't grown in the UK. So it's kind of like a balance, really. 
Um, but I think that, you know, we're definitely opening up a lot more people into using ingredients that are grown in the UK. Um, okay, right. So we have our seaweed in here. Um, anybody who is cooking along at home who doesn't have one of these, you can just crumble it in your hands. It is really nicely toasted so that we can crumble it in our hands. Um, and you can use a bit, like if you've got like a big stone pestle and mortar, I'm jealous of that. Um, but you can use that. You could use that. Oh, we've got a bit of seaweed in our... Okay. So, and I'm going to just turn our leeks off because our leeks are cooked enough now. And I'm just going to scoot them over to the side of the pan. There we go. There we go. Right. Okay. So, and now we give these a blitz. Let's bring you guys to the overhead camera so that you can see a bit better. Right. Here we go. Okay, so you guys can see there is still some bits left in there. So I'm going to blend it, and whilst I blend it, I'm going to give it a shake. There we go. So now it's in small pieces. You can get it even fine if you want. Let's, let's just blend it a bit more. Do a bit of damage to your ears. <laughs> but... Let's see how this is doing. Right, there we go. There we go. So now we can make the mixture of the fish fingers in this bowl. So we've got our seaweed, and we'll just pop our seaweed in there into our bowl. And then we can pop our leeks into there as well. And I'm just gonna make sure that there are no bits here because we're gonna reuse this pan. There we go. So we want it nice and clean because we don't want things to be burning on it. Um, and so now we have to blend some of the other ingredients. So we've got our chickpeas here. And so if you, um, if you don't have a chopper attachment, then you can just um, use a potato masher or something similar and give these a good bash because this is going to be one of the things that is going to help everything stick together. Um, so we do need them to be, we do need the chickpeas to be broken up. Um, so, okay, so we will pop these into our chopper. And just give them a little blitz. How these are doing, there's just a few more that need to be blended in there. There we go. Okay, so it's still a little bit chunky, but that's that's fine. We'll have a bit of texture, but we've got enough um, of those chickpeas that are blended 
do give us a bit of um, kind of stickiness to get everything to hold together. Okay, so um, let me just check if we've got any questions. There we go. Okay. Uh, it just needs to do you blend the leak. Uh, you either can or you can't. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter either way. I chop mine so small that it's absolutely fine not to be blended. If yours is quite big, then um, Justine, then then do blend it. You can just blend it with those chickpeas. That's absolutely fine. But I decided not to blend mine this time. Uh, oh, Justine said that my pieces are pretty big. Yes, in that case, then do you blend them, do you blend them. Okay, right, so I'm just gonna pop this on, there we go, and that can just be keeping warm while we do this last bit. So with our jackfruit, we are making sure that we squeeze any water out of it before we pop it into our blender. Okay, so do squeeze any water that is in it. There we go. because we don't want that water in our recipe. That's gonna really dial down the flavor. So I was actually thinking of like, you know, what would be like a, a UK version of jackfruit, like what could mimic um, kind of fish flakes. And I think like we do need to find something like that. Uh, so the only thing that I could think of that was even remotely similar is um, artichoke, globe artichoke. I think that that might work, but if you guys have any suggestions, then please do let me know. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, there's quite a lot of water coming out of this because jackfruit is essentially like it's these fronds and so they hold a lot of water um they hold a hell of a lot of water but you know one other thing they are very good at is holding marinade you know if they're good at holding water they're good at holding marinade same like with tofu you know it's the same principle if it's good at holding water it's good at holding marinade so we can get rid of the water that we don't want to be in the recipe and then add the marinade. Okay. Now, when we blend it, we don't want to make it into a puree. We just want to pulse it so that it becomes fish flakes, essentially. That's what it's gonna look like. Let's just get rid of this. So if you guys don't have a chopper or a food processor, you can just roughly chop it yourselves. We just want it to be in small pieces. Okay. So I, I am being really careful with it as I go. I'm not uh, doing it for too long. Literally, we are just pulsing it. Okay, there we go. So we've got rid of any big bits in there and it's these flakes and that is what we are after. Okay, so now we can add the jackfruit to our mixture in our bowl. And we need to add a good whack of salt with this, guys. I'm just gonna take this off. The heat is already ready for us and we're not quite there yet. Okay, so we've got this now jam-packed full bowl of good stuff. As I said, we need to make sure that it's well salted. 
because jackfruit is a blank flavour, doesn't have much flavour of its own at all. You guys can add stock powder as well if you prefer to add stock powder. But we do need to impart quite a lot of flavour in it. Um, so in the recipe I have said that you can use a bit of plant milk if you need to. And this is one of these times when we need to really pay attention to the texture of our mixture. So it needs to be it needs to be able to hold together and not fall apart. So if you guys have made um, energy balls, energy balls are the same. Let me just bring you guys over here. Mm, there you are. There you are. Yeah, so um, anything like energy balls, um, sausages, burgers, anything that we need to kind of like make into a shape whether it's a ball or a patty or a sausage, it doesn't matter, but we want it to hold together. So we want it to be moist enough to hold together, but not soggy, um, because if it's too soggy, then it will fall apart in the pan. Um, so with a lot of these kind of recipes, you get to know the feel of the stuff. You get to know like how wet and how dry it is. Um, and that often that comes with practice. Often that comes with practice. So, but I am here getting my hands involved. So don't be afraid of getting your hands involved. Um, so uh, if you guys are cooking along at home, please don't just tentatively um, mix it around with a spoon. Do get your hands involved and I'm really massaging it in because I want to make sure that it's all really fully incorporated. Okay, and that all of that salt is mixed in as well. Because, uh, yeah, we want that. We want it to taste really good with every single bite, every single bite. So we really want it to be mixed in, mixed in very, very well. Okay, so a couple of troubleshooting things. If you find that your mixture is too wet, you can add some of the breadcrumbs. If you find that your mixture is too dry, you can add a bit of plant milk, but do go really slowly with it. Don't add loads because it's really, really annoying when then you make the mixture too sloppy and then you have to try to correct it. So, you know, do it in parts very, very, very slowly. Um, Justine said, was it salt you put in? Yes, yes. So now we've, we've used up pretty much all of the ingredients except for the breadcrumbs, um, Justine. So in my bowl here, I have our jackfruit and our leeks and our seaweed. This is a really good test of my terrible memory. Um, and uh, chickpeas. Um, I think that's it, isn't it? Nuri, chickpeas, jackfruit, leek, salt. There we go. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Hmm. Um, okay, so Virginia said, speaking of tofu, normally it is firm and perfect to marinate, but I froze firm clear spring tofu, but it took on lots of water. Any way to stop this happening? Um, to be honest, I think it's really, really down to the tofu. It's really down to the tofu. So if it isn't very compact, then it may well take on a lot of water. Um, if you could try, if you, if you can get hold of it, the, the tofu, T-O-F-O-O, -O -O, that brand, um, that is much more compact. So it doesn't take on as much water at all. Uh, David says hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry, what was the question about 800 plus and 500 watt. Uh, was it about my blender? Was it about my blender? Um, so the blender that I use is 500 watt. Um, but I think that Dougie, I think he recently, he bought what he thought was gonna be a 500 watt um, blender and it turned out to be 800 watt, which was a bonus. Okay, so you need a good wide plate here. Um, and then we need to start making up our fishless fingers. So add, a sprinkling of your breadcrumbs. There we go. And by the way, guys, you could do this in the air fryer as well, because I know a few of you like your air fryer. In fact, Sarah, isn't it you? I think it's you that likes your air fryer. Right, there we go. So I've got my pan back on. It was starting to smoke, so I had to take it off. Um, oh, Colleen said, yes, it was the blender. Okay, yeah, yes. Sorry, sometimes like these things like fly by and I don't get to see them. Um, yes, so my blender is 500 watt. Yeah, yeah, but always with a chopper attachment 
always with a chop chopper attachment. Okay, right, so guys, I'm going to bring you to the overhead position so that you can see me do this uh, closer up. Okay, so um, I, I'm, oh, it's Colleen that loves her air fryer. Okay, okay. So I'm really gonna press this together because we want it to hold together as much as possible, okay? Um, and then I'm going to make the shape. So just a word about frying, it is actually easier to quickly fry something that is a square shape rather than circle, or, or, you know, round. So quite often I actually end up putting these into squares. You can, you can actually bake these as well. You can actually bake them, but when I bake them, which I prefer to do, um, the colour isn't as nice. The colour, you know, it, it doesn't go like a golden brown, unfortunately. It just looks a bit pale. Um, so that's why I do them this way. But if you're, if you're not fussed about that, then you can just bake them. That's absolutely fine. Let's bring this over here so you guys can see a bit more. There we go. Uh, and yeah, thank you for uh, um, answering Tatiana's question. Um, Colleen says, anyone who wants to reduce oil, you should consider an air fryer. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, they are absolutely brilliant things. Um, so in fact, in the future, you know, I'll try and give that as an option. But yeah, with these, it would really, really work. Because with an air fryer, they can be great for things that are more on the dry side. So rather than like a wet batter, you know, these are dry because they're, they're crumbed, they're breadcrumbs. And sorry, Virginia had a question about making the breadcrumbs. These are pre-bought uh, gluten-free breadcrumbs by Orgran. Um, so uh, yeah, they're already made, but I did give the option of using something like millet flakes. Um, so that would be a good option or quinoa flakes, either of those for the gluten-free option. Or, I mean, you can even make it yourself. You know, if you've got some gluten-free bread and particularly the ends, you know, if you're not gonna use them, then dry them out in a low oven and then uh, put them, e either you can grate them, you can grate them yourself or you can put it into a food processor. You can make your own that way. Um, so if you wanna bake them, I would say bake them for no more than 15 minutes because you just want to heat them through. Everything, is cooked in here already you know everything it, it nothing's raw um so you don't have to worry about that you just want to heat it through but the thing is with um chickpeas is that they can dry out they can dry out really easily really easy to so, so i would say you know don't cook them for any more than around like 20 minutes on 180 degrees So, uh, Sarah says, uh, how would you do it with quinoa or buckwheat flakes? So with uh, this, you know, you, you just use uh, uh, quinoa or buckwheat flakes instead and roll them in, in those flakes. So I've done it with millet flakes before. It definitely works really, really well with that. You just need to make sure that whatever flakes you're using, they're fine. That's the key, you know, they need to be fine. In fact, with one student's recipe uh, that we developed for Hogmizods, um, we we actually used their dried, uh, sorry, their um, broad beans. So they have these um, roasted broad beans that you can buy that are absolutely amazing. They have flavour on the out on on them, um, and so we just blended those and used that as the crumb. Okay, so as you can see. I'm not making these too long, and that means that they're gonna be much easier to deal with in the pan. Okay, what time are we? Right, so let's get cooking these. Let me just wash my hands quickly. Okay. Right, I'm gonna add a little bit of oil. Tiny amount of oil. There we go. So we just want to cook these until they're brown on all sides. 
So we will need to rotate them in the pan. We may need to add um, a little bit more oil as well. And there we go. Okay, so whilst they are cooking, see if we've got any more questions. Uh, Sarah says, so we need to grind the flakes. They are quite small. Sarah, if, if the flakes are small, then they might be okay um, as they are. Um, Cece says, what oil are you using? I only cook with coconut oil. You can use coconut oil if you want to. That's absolutely fine. Whatever, whatever oil you feel comfortable using. So we say exactly the same thing when it comes to sugar as well. You know, usually um, in my recipes I use coconut sugar, but I say, you know, if you want to, if you're happy using something else, then then go for it. So uh, yeah, coconut oil would be absolutely fine. Uh, I'm just using uh, uh, extra virgin olive oil because that's the one that I am comfortable with eating with my diet. Um, okay, Tatiana says, I can only see half of the list. Okay, do you mean the ingredients list? Oh, no. On this video, we can look at the last bit of the ingredients, or is it the same for you? Okay, so um, let me just talk you through all of the ingredients so that you know that uh, you can see everything. So two sheets of nori, uh, one can of chickpeas, one can of jackfruit, about 80 grams of leeks. Um, it can be a bit more though, that's absolutely fine. Some oil, a bit of salt. I mean, really that's to taste as well. Maybe some plant milk if the mixture is a bit too dry but you as you saw like i didn't have to use that with mine at all um so you might not need you might not, not need to use that and then we have our breadcrumbs so around 50 grams of breadcrumbs but as you can see you know i have some left so you know that's just like a guesstimate um you may need more um than i've used here you might you might just use the same amount there we go so I'm just constantly turning these over. Um, Sarah says, how big was your jackfruit can? My jar is 500 grams. Okay. I hope I haven't taken the recycling out yet. Give us a second. Okay, this is 400 grams. 400 grams, so not far off. Sorry, I should have said that um, in the in the ingredients list. Uh, Laura Louise says the banana blossom works so well. Good, good, good. Uh, the mixture is so tasty, I'll have none left to fry. <laughs> so you're just literally eating it out of the bowl. <laughs> okay, so this can get a bit smoky, which is absolutely fine. And I hope our smoke alarm is okay with it as well. It may, it may make an appearance, as it sometimes does. I think I just need to add a little bit more oil to my pan because it's really drying out now. But I do use one that has this little nozzle on it. So I actually just refill it now. Um, and that means that it allows me to add just small bits rather than lots. Because uh, when you don't have one of those nozzles on, it can really like glug out. And then you're adding far too much oil. Okay. Nearly done, guys. So if anybody is cooking along at home... Please do let us know how it's going. It would be really, really lovely to hear. Really lovely to hear. Okay, so uh, Colleen says, where's Khan? I know, where is Khan? I hope he's all right. Uh, no, fi no fish jokes. I know, I know. We could have had a lot of fishy fun today. Uh, Justine says, it's fallen to pieces in the pan. Would that mean it needs milk beforehand? Depends. It depends, Justine. So, it might be that um, the molding technique that I showed you, where I did really force it together. I don't know if you could see that because you're on the, on the overhead camera when I did that, but you really do need to press it together um, and make sure that it is as firm as possible when you do that bit. Um, but yes, I mean, it could be that you might benefit from adding a bit of soy milk, but do that um, sparingly. So just add a little bit at a time and then have a feel, feel of it and just you'll be able to test like you know whether it's going to fall apart or not um so yeah you could definitely try try that um it can be difficult to be exact with a recipe like this because we don't know like what your chickpeas are going to be like or you know there are a few like variables but yeah you do have that option of adding 
adding a bit of plant milk but it is a lot of it is to do with that squeezing and molding technique okay so uh denise says i ordered my jack from amazon good 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 i'm glad to, um you can try this recipe and let me know how you get on um okay right okay almost 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 there guys i'm just trying to get a nice color on these which is finally happening so depending on the breadcrumbs you're using um they will brown quicker they may they may well um brown quicker i've noticed that with these these this type of gluten-free breadcrumb that i'm using from all um it does take a while for them to brown it does take a while for them to brown but you know you could even use um some ground oats some ground oats would be a really really great option um for this so let's bring you guys over here there we go and then you can see how well they have been browning so i'm using my tongs a lot today um i really like um uh, this tool i use it a hell of a lot um, in the kitchen and in the school we have a lot of them as well um uh, they are really really useful because quite often you know you're trying to um, make something turn around and you use a fork and it doesn't really work you try and use your fingers and it's quite painful <laughs> etc etc um so sarah says did you say something about capers early on i didn't but maybe you were referring to the capers that are in this picture um so the this recipe is actually on our website <clears throat> and i served it with an aioli um and some uh some sugar snap peas that have some capers in them so capers would go really really well um with with our fishless fingers definitely really really good um, addition to it okay so there we go guys uh justine i hope that your fishery fingers are, are sticking together just turn this off there we go okay so let's just pop them onto our plate and I don't know if you guys can see this actually i should hold, hold this up so you can see it <clears throat> this is very very sturdy at grabbing one of these and bringing it over okay um so if you try and do this with a smaller implement then you know you're not grabbing the whole thing but you can see why professional kitchens use these okay there we go so there Oh, our fish free fingers. Minor square, minor square, which, you know, that's fine. As I said, like, that is a good way to to cook them because when they're, when they're round, um, not all of the sides can touch the oil and get crisped up. Um, whereas if you have them as squares like this, it's much easier, much, much easier. Um, so there we go, guys. I do have to eat one of these now. So, the first time I made these, I was eating them, and it really freaked me out. It really freaked me out because I was like, this is vegan, isn't it? And I'd made it, so I knew it definitely was. But it is really one of those things that, um, one of those recipes that can be great for people who miss fish, people who, you know, you have over dinner, and they're like, kind of stick their nose up at vegan food um you know people who are hard to convince it's a great recipe for people like that also a really great recipe for kids you know if kids are transitioning to being vegan and they're used to things like fish fingers then it's a great recipe for them really really great recipe for them um so i hope <laughs> that uh you have enjoyed this recipe um uh justine says that they are yummy which is really really great um david says fish dust <laughs> and don't say they look great um and denise i have taste tested one i think i might have to have some more mm. so mm. really nice really i'm gonna have to put some ketchup out of the fridge in a minute and carry on okay so tomorrow we'll have our q a so um after the show i will post something i will post a picture probably one of my bitmojis um in the group 
and just ask for your questions just so that we've got like some to refer to and some to get us going at the start but of course you can come and uh just ask me questions actually in the q a uh but you know at least um if we have like some to get started with then that would be wonderful that would be wonderful um okay so have a really really lovely sunday guys um i hope that you have a wonderful day and that you cook some tasty food um and yeah you just, you just have a really really lovely sunday um dog i'll see you in about an hour okay <laughs> okay um yeah keep on cooking guys keep on cooking and have a lovely day